This is my permanent space. I put a mark on this one. It's my territory. Let's stretch a little bit. We're almost at the end of round part 78 on the dollar chain. There's only 81, so right there. That means we're going on spring break. <laughs> you want to start back home from spring break, <laughs> right? Then we're going to grab another book. I know you're going to go, oh, no, go back to the first one. I don't like the sign of that. <laughs> Are you teaching? You're going back to number one? No, we're going to go another book. Oh, man, that's not right. <laughs> Books. Nothing in the world is softer or weaker than water, yet nothing is better at overcoming the hard and the strong. This is because nothing can replace it. That the weak overcomes the strong and the soft overcomes the hard, everybody in the world knows and cannot put into practice. Therefore, sages say, the one who accepts the humiliation of the state is called its master. The one who accepts the misfortune of the state becomes king of the world. The truth seems like the opposite. Water appears to be the weakest and softest things in the world. It always confirms to the shape of its container. Pour it into a bottle, it's a bottle. Pour it into a cup, it's a cup. Water is the ultimate symbol, the yielding and flexible aspect of the Tao. At the same time, there is also nothing better than water at dissolving the hardest and most unyielding rocks. We only have to look around to see how water has carved ravines and canyons out of mountains all over the world. Water is a universal soul, but nothing can replace it. This observation of water teaches us that despite a yielding, humble appearance, the weak overcomes the strong, and the soft overcomes the hard. This is a principle that can, we can all understand, yet somehow we cannot put it into practice in real life. We still have a tendency to meet force with force. When someone yells at us, we yell back louder when someone trespasses against us, we retaliate in full measure. How should we react to humiliation to accept it calmly requires far more strength of character than to respond with hostility and aggression. Remember the power of water and let it guide you to yield and overcome. What happens when we encounter misfortune? If we can be like water, then we too will have the depth of character contained difficulties and disappointments. Keep the lesson of water with you as you handle setbacks in your life. By embracing the seemingly weak and soft, we gain personal power. This is the truth that, at first glance, appears contrary to expectations. Reflection. Hmm, I see. <laughs> um, I remember looking at... Um, pictures of like, National Geographic and seeing the river and some of the people have the particular boats that you can kayak but um, when you look at the water, the water slowly at times flows over rocks and it's comforting and at times when, you, when they're doing the rapids it flows quick and kind of crashing um, synonymous with what you uh, just mentioned, but that is a hard task to do to not let um, disruption cause you um, anger. That is, a, that is a task that um, takes discipline and time. It's quite interesting. I'm trying.
power and being like flexible, flexibility is a sign of life. Being rigid is a sign of death. Like a dead tree is going to crack over the head, but a live tree is going to leap with the wind. So this is remember the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. Mm -hmm. It's um, when you towards the Tao, Tao Freddy's Mark Kung Fu, Tai Chi. Uh, a lot of the Chinese martial arts, they're guided by the Tao. Even some of the Japanese martial arts like Judo, Kido, um, even Taekwondo, is supposed to be guided by the Tao. So if you guys understand the Tao, gain a deeper understanding of it, you're going to gain a deeper understanding of the martial arts. They're trying to put combat sport like boxing, kickboxing, all this football type of entertainment. The Super Bowl is coming up Sunday. You know, everybody's, a lot of people be watching, it's making billions of dollars. Um, people are competing. CTE, concussions, injuries. People like to see violence. That's just what it is. That's what they pay for. Um, martial arts, you're defending yourself. If somebody's trying to take your life, then you gotta defend yourself. You don't want to be violent, but sometimes you have to defend yourself. But that's not what it's all, just all about. So as you train in martial arts, remember these teachings of the Tao. You know, we, we read through, we're pretty much about to finish the Tao in class, officially. We finished the Tao Jeet Kune Do in class, officially. So, the teachings are there. It's not just me saying it. Lao Tzu saying it, Bruce Lee saying it. All right? Buddha, Osho, um, Confucius. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Muhammad, whoever, these spiritual figures, whatever religion that you follow, usually is supposed to be guided by peace. Even Islam is supposed to mean the, the way of peace or something like that. Yeah. You know, like every religion is supposed to be promoting peace. So, martial arts is supposed to head towards peace. If you're training in the martial arts and you start bullying people, beating up people because you because it makes you feel good inside. And you're not doing the martial arts, you're doing something else. I don't care how skillful you are. You're still doing something else other than the martial arts. So, train to be proficient, train to be good, but use it for good purposes. Use it for good people. Use it to defend yourself, but don't become a bully. Don't hurt people just because you can. And even if people pay you to hurt people, it's still something that wouldn't we be going towards the principles of martial arts? So, um, hold it within your heart, because it's very much misrepresented out there in the public, and we got to represent it within ourselves, in our everyday lives. But what about if your girlfriend asks you to be his ass? <laughs> <laughs> Would you do it? <laughs> You beat the one who asks you to who pays you. <laughs> Take the money and beat them. <laughs> I'm not. You got a girlfriend. You should already have that. You should already have you a couple of girlfriends. <laughs> and if I have those. Uh, no, we need you here. <laughs> Next reading, part 80. Small country, few people. Let them have many weapons, but not use them. Let the people regard death seriously and not migrate far away. Although they have boats and chariots, they have no need to take them. Although they have armors and weapons, they have no need to display them. Let the people return to tying knots and using them, savor their food and buy their clothes, content in their homes, happy in their customs. Neighboring countries see one another. Hear the sounds of roosters and dogs from one another. The people, until they grow old and die, do not go back and forth with one another. This chapter is about an ideal place where people have vehicles and weapons, but do not need to use them. It reflects the time when the Tao Te Ching was written, a time of strife. 
with many refugees displaced by armed conflicts. It is unfortunate that these lies also reflect the world today. In some ways, humanity has not made much progress in the 2,500 years since Lao Tzu's time. Tying knots was a way for people to record events. It is a general metaphor for simple solutions, which are often the most effective and reliable solutions. Food need not be elaborate to be delicious. Clothes need not be extravagant to be comfortable. We can use this as an inspiration for simplifying our lives. Do we absolutely need luxuries to be happy? To be able to hear your neighbors' roosters and dogs means you do not live far away from them. Despite the close proximity, there is no friction. People in an ideal community do not bicker. What can we do if we are in a place with much bickering? We can start by embracing peace and letting go of the need to get back at someone who has wronged us. The transformation from contention to harmony has to begin somewhere. We may as well be the first to move toward the ideal place described in this chapter. The last line is often misunderstood. Some think it means people in this land do not visit one another. This isn't quite right because Tao cultivators are hardly antisocial. When we take the meaning of the entire chapter into consideration, it becomes clear that the last line really means people do not visit trouble upon one another. In this ideal place, petty games of tit for tat simply do not exist. Flesh. Um, one time I worked at Bloomingdale's. Uh, employee uh, savings were quite good on the garments. And I tried to look fashionable. That was there. Now, when I go to work, I try to look like Obama. <laughs> not as fashionable because it's not what you look like on the outside, but what you have on the inside. And I'm still trying to, hopefully, get close to finding contentment. And if that is synonymous with um, you know, with what you just read, and I am somewhat close, but um, I try to um, live my life in a peaceful manner. I don't have to let things upset me as much. I used to try to fit in. Now, excuse me for saying I really don't uh, give a hoot. I fit in with a group or well not necessarily a group I to get fit in here. But with others outside it doesn't make a difference. I have the same um, Dante team at home, but I never fully understood. Oh, really? And now I get to take a look at it. Nice. Uh, it gave me a, a new, new meaning. Yeah. I have nobody else having any commentary in the part 80. This is the final chapter 81. Let's do it. All right, true words are not beautiful. Beautiful words are not true. Those who are good do not debate. Those who debate are not good. Those who know are not broad of knowledge. Those who are broad of knowledge do not know. Sages do not accumulate. The more they assist others, the more they possess. The more they give to others, the more they gain. The Tao of heaven benefits and does not harm. The Tao of sages assists and does not contend. These lines can sometimes be misused. People who like to criticize others may cite these words to justify their behavior. The difference between them and sages lies in intention. Sages speak plainly and truthfully, when doing so benefits others without harming them. Those who are skillful in the art of living recognize the fertility of arguments and refrain from engaging in debates. Sages let actions reveal their virtues. They have no need to explain themselves with words. Sometimes we think we are helping friends by arguing with them, but because this brings contention into the relationship, 
and can do more harm than good. People are rarely at their best when a debate causes them to become defensive and stubborn. It would be better for us to leave the matter alone and wait for the right time to approach the subject. When we say jack of all trades, master of none, we are describing people who have not achieved excellence in any one thing. It is as if they are digging many shallow wells and not getting much water. The opposite is someone with true mastery of knowledge, someone who has no wish to chase after a broad spectrum of subjects. When we align ourselves with this concept, we concentrate only on a few wells, digging them deeply and getting as much water as we want. Accumulate refers to worldly goods. We do not need to pursue the accumulation of goods because we can find contentment and abundance in helping and giving. The more we render assistance, the more joyous fulfillment we feel, the more we give, the more we receive. The positive, uplifting Tao of heaven benefits all things. The rain waters all plants, the sun warms everyone. In emulating this, we also seek to benefit all people and refrain from hurting them with criticism or contention. Reflection. It's a little over the years I didn't know what I was doing, now I can. And I think in life it might be expressive and I should concentrate on it more, becoming a professional student and learning. <laughs> so far I got bored by getting me a degree out of boredom. <laughs> now I have to do that on a conscious level, become a professional student and keep learning. So the Tao right here is talking about criticism, you know what I'm saying? Um, refrain from criticism. Um, earlier chapter talked about rather than focusing your energies on criticizing others, you maybe criticize yourself to excel on your own, for your own development. Um, we live in a world of criticism. You know, with the internet, everybody wants to critique, everybody wants to leave comments, everybody wants to share their opinions and everything. And um, amidst all this criticism, the question is, you know, what is truly um, the right guidance? If you have 10 million people speaking their mind, who are the people that are telling the truth or who are the people that are actually going to even worth listening to? You know, so, um, you know, I try to guide the school by the principles of the Tao. You know, so when I train students, I don't like to criticize people. You know, I like to criticize myself so I can keep developing. But when students come here, it's almost like they're saying, "Well, I accept your criticism. I want you to. I want your help to help me improve." So then, that's why I offer my criticism. But if you're not my student, I'm not going to criticize you. You know, because I'm going to do my own thing. Let you do your own thing. When we when we do the sparring, I always say, you know, experiment with what you think will work. If what you think works works, then that's the way. So I try to tell you what to do. I tell you to do what you think will, will work. And then you decide for yourself or you see for yourself if what you think will work will actually work. And if it doesn't, then maybe you will be open to criticism to improve. Um, as a teacher, yes, um, I, don't, I don't like criticism from just random people. 
because there's a lot of people out there that just think they know everything. But I do accept criticism from the people that are truly masters of what they do. So, um, as you can see, you know, I read the book from from Bruce Lee, Dao Ji Kung Do, reading this book on, from Lao Tzu. Um, when you're reading from somebody, you're accepting them as a teacher. You know, you're you're humbling yourself, you're surrendering yourself to um, somebody who might be a master of what they do. Um, I think it's important to be able to decipher between the real masters and people that just pretend. So, you know, I get a lot of criticism out there. People sending me messages, people commenting and calling me, and I don't just accept it from anybody. A lot of times it's just a waste of my time. I got better things to do. Um, things is, if you silence your mind and you get into meditation, a lot of times you can figure out and figure out what you need to improve upon within yourself without even having to have anybody tell you. Um, do a lot of self-reflection um, and a lot of meditation. And it's almost like just looking yourself in the mirror and just being honest with yourself and be like, you know what, this is something that I'm not doing right, I can do better. And then you make yourself get better through your own effort rather than having to have somebody else tell you. So we didn't have mirrors and say I had like a big pimple on my face and I didn't know and somebody had to tell me. But it could be the person, but if I look at the mirror then I see myself in the mirror, i like, okay, there's a blemish to be fixed in. You know, when you look at your teeth, you know, there's something wrong with your teeth. You don't need somebody to tell you, the mirror will tell you. So when you have wisdom, you will do self-reflection. You become your own mirror and you make your own corrections and basically achieve greatness through your own efforts to improve upon yourself. And that's self-discipline. That's what Kung Fu is all about. That's self-discipline to better yourself for your entire life. So essentially when you get to a certain level, you don't need somebody to tell you what to do to get better. You know within yourself what you need to do. You know, and um, that's the way of the Tao as far as you know, my understanding of it. And it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a different approach than what people are used to. Everybody's always trying to seek for other people to tell them the way. But the Buddhist teaching, Lao Tzu, um, they're talking about pointing towards yourself, finding, the, finding it within yourself. And that's what happened with the Buddha. I think he was searching for like seven years for the master, couldn't find the master. And then he just got exhausted, just went under the Bodhi tree, started meditating, and then all of a sudden it just dawned on him that it's, it's within himself. You know, the, 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 the ways within him. So he came upon that realization. J. Christian Murdy did. Osho did. Even Bruce Lee's talking about it. Lao Tzu's talking about it. So, seek it within yourself. Find yourself. And that's the way. Alright, that's the conclusion of the Dao Te Ching for today. Move on to the next